I have had problems with short-term memory. I don't know whether that's the fact that I'm 59 or I've got a brain tumor to be quite honest. When I first started to notice there was uh, something wrong with his sight, that was the first thing, I, one of the first things I noticed was double vision. And I was also getting a lot of, I don't know what you call it really, I was hallucinating, I was seeing things that weren't there. All of that is is an area of light and dark, light and dark, light and dark, all merging into like hills really. Or well, if there was suddenly a little boy standing there, I'd know he wasn't there, really. You know, I'd, I'd be sitting in the, sitting in this chair here listening to music or whatever, and uh, two or three people would walk walk through me. Like ghosts walking through a wall. And we'd be going along in a car, obviously me as a passenger. And driving along the um, A2, which is uh, you know quite a busy road. And the A2 would be lined with old Victorian flats. There are no old Victorian flats along there. And uh, one time we were driving around Old Bexley and uh, we were driving through a hop field. Um, and there are no hop fields in Old Bexley. After being hit with that shock, sort of six months ago, um, or a year ago now, when they first found out that um, I had this problem, almost a year ago, it, it knocks you back so far that you think, well, you know, you never know if there's going to be a tomorrow. Obviously, uh, doctors are not born doctors, are they? They're not born with the knowledge, and I'd have to learn the knowledge, and they have to, they have to get the answers and, you know, questions from people like me, and if there was nothing to be cured, they wouldn't find any cures, would they? Life takes on a different meaning. Is there anything like a last memory of, of, of something you've seen before you before you actually went, lost your vision completely? Um, no. No. Because um, when it was going, you, you try and remember everything. No, it's not exactly, a, it's not as if, you know, someone's, it's not like being switched off and you think, oh, I've got to remember that, you know. It's, it's, it's all, uh, you remember what you remember, don't you? What do you think you miss most about not being able to see? Uh, it's an hard one to answer. The obvious thing is not being able to see your family, not being able to read, although that's taken care of with the talking books, reading for lazy people. But not being able to see my wife and sons. And, uh, Grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's changed your your? I mean, how has it changed your relationships? Do you think? Um, I don't know really. Um. not so much a relationship change 
It's uh, a dependence challenge. <laughs> you should all move in. All move into a bungalow when you're fifty. <laughs> Just in case. I have sort of days when I think it's getting better. And I have days when I know it's getting worse or days when I know it's getting, you know, it seems to be a bit better. And whether that is the pressure increasing or decreasing in my brain or not, I don't know. So do you, do you get scared of things? Me? Yeah. Um, and in the future, mm. a bit, sometimes not at all, um, other times quite a lot, you know, what's the future got to be, um, have you got a future, and if, if you have got a future, how much worse are you going to be a year, two years, ten years down the road, you know. How much hard is it going to be? Yeah, we've not long, we've not changed together, no. have we? Long I may mean. it last. No, she still hits me. Yeah, <laughs> I can hit him now and run. See where I can't. You don't have to run. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean uh, people would believe that. They can if they like. <laughs> yeah, we're still here. There you go.